Greetings and welcome back to Fifty Shades of Beige. We've got episode two of Chris's Crazy Coolers today. We are going with the least expensive AM5 slash LGA1366 compatible cooler on Amazon. The $8 Yode Hode. That's right, the Yode Hode by CPU Cooling Specialist. You guys will have to bear with me here. I had an SD card die on me while I was recording. This is my second time through. So if things don't quite match up as far as what I'm saying, what my hands are doing, that's because I'm using footage from another camera, the second camera that I had running. So let's go ahead and unbox it here real quick. So as you can see, uh, this is a flower style cooler. Oh, let's see here. We get some, so I'm sorry, thermal compound in a soft pack. Um, we've got all of our little pens and stuff for our um, Intel mounting. We've got an Intel mounting ring. If you can avoid using these rings, I highly recommend that you just not use them. They're, they're pretty terrible. Um, they don't put a lot of tension. They're, re they're really meant for an older style of motherboard. They don't put a lot of tension on the cooler, so you don't get very good mounting pressure. And then here's our cooler. And I'll be darned, this looks like it might be all copper. And I'm not sure if this is actually copper or not, to be honest, it looks like copper, but it may not be. I'm guessing for the price, well, it, it's not very dense, let's put it that way. We basically got, yeah, multiple piece construction, which stinks, unfortunately. Ideally, this would be a one piece construction copper slug from a cast. But it looks like what they did, and if you look up here close, I'll show you. It looks like they cast the outside and then put the heat pipes through and then pressed everything together. I'm no manufacturing expert, but that's what it looks like to me. We've got ourselves a fancy blue fan. Looks good. And our classic AM4 mounting clips. It did not come with any type of instructions or anything. It just says CPU. And apparently the company's name is Yodhode, which we'll check on Google Translate. <laughs> All right, so Chris, you asked me, Chris, why, why even bother with this cooler? It's only $8, doesn't make any sense. Nobody's gonna buy this thing. Well, somebody's bound to buy it if it's on Amazon and it's the cheapest cooler. Here's a scenario, let me, let me pause it to you a scenario. You're trying to build a custom PC on the absolute lowest budget possible. And you found yourself a used CPU, maybe a Athlon 3000G dual core. Let's just assume it didn't come with a cooler, right? But you're really just trying to scrape by well, the Yode Hode is going to be your best option in that case if you're really trying to absolutely save money at all costs, right? Um, some people during uh, episode one of Chris's Crazy Coolers wanted to see me actually go through the process, uh, which I kind of skipped to make the episode shorter, but uh, since it's been requested, I will show you the process. So any AM4 motherboard is gonna come with these plastic brackets. That's kind of the reason why I went with AM4 so we didn't have to worry about this god awful ring that should be banished to the netherworlds of PC computing. I'll be darned, okay. So I was wrong about the construction. If you see here, I'll bring you in close again. It looks like these tines are actually the fins going through the center and then they pressed the blocks on the outside for the heat pipes and the mounting hardware. So yeah, a little bit different construction than I thought it was. Still not, I don't know, I feel like it's still not ideal. And I feel like this is also a telltale sign that this probably isn't actually copper. It's probably just nickel. And they wanted to make it look like copper. But anyway, yeah, it looks like they do this in one piece press it together and then they run the heat pipes through the center um and then i'm assuming well i'm assuming those are heat pipes they might be no they're heat pipes they're two tiny little heat pipes uh and then i guess they might run some studs or something through it to hold it all together 
and then you've got Phillips screws holding your fan in. So yeah, since our friends at Node Hode included some Hitixi thermal compound, we're gonna go ahead and use the, the stuff that it came with. Once again, we're going with a, a use case of, well, I need the cheapest thing possible, right? So if you need the least expensive option, you're gonna use the thermal compound that came in the box. All right, so with these, you just hook one side in and then you push as harder than you've ever pushed your entire life on the other side. There we go. All right, and just like that, we've mounted our cooler. So I'll give it an, an A for ease of mounting. Bring it a little closer there. Uh, actually, and I don't know if maybe the tension on this is a little light, for this style of cooler, I'll give them credit for leaving these two spaces open. They probably saved themselves a couple dollars too. But since they left those two spaces open in the middle, it makes it really easy for you to just push your hand down and mount it. Some of these, the tension on these little leaf springs is too high and they're just a bear to get on. Okay, let's get this thing hooked up to power and uh, see how it works. Uh, unfortunately, I lost some footage of the 3000G tests and the screen capture for it as well because I was uh, capturing in the wrong format and it got corrupted. Um, long story short, the Yode Hood performed admirably with the 3000G. It never exceeded 48 degrees Celsius and the fan RPMs topped out around 1300 RPM. So it was a little on the higher side, but uh, not fast enough to really cause any excessive noise or anything like that. So to answer a question from the beginning of the video, if you buy an Athlon 3000G and it didn't come with a cooler and you absolutely need the cheapest option, is the Yode Hood a viable uh, option for you? And the answer is yes. I, I was really pleasantly surprised. It dissipated that uh, 25 watts of power pack of uh, package power like it was nothing. So that's fantastic. So what do you think? We've got our Ryzen 5700 X here mounted up on our same test system. Do you think the Yode Hode can handle it? I don't know. We're about to find out, let's see. I've got Passmark pulled up here. Uh, we're going to do burn-in test 10.2, and yes, I know it's the evaluation version, but hey, this, this channel's not monetized. Uh, I'm a hobbyist at this point. Right off the bat, we're climbing straight up. We've got 100% uh, CPU utilization. We're at about 78 watts there, and we are climbing up through the 60s very quickly here. Actually, it slowed down a little bit all of a sudden. That's that's odd, okay. Well, let's see how far we make it here. I've got a feeling that the Yode Hode is going to get fully saturated around 74 degrees. I have some maxes. These were from running Linpack. We ran the Linpack extended benchmark twice while I was still having my capture issue. And 77.5 was where we maxed out. Um, and I couldn't get it to go any higher with Linpack, which is why we went ahead and downloaded Burn and Test instead, which is obviously probably a more suitable benchmark for uh, testing out CPU coolers anyway. So we're going to use Burn and Test from here on forward. And I don't know if you can hear it, but yeah, once the fan gets up to 2000 RPMs, anywhere really over 1800, you can really start to hear it howl. So this is definitely not the quietest CPU cooler. It's about as loud as an AMD stock cooler, the AMD Stealth Cooler at max. Um, but it's got a little bit of a high pitch to it as well, which is kind of annoying. And I think we can confidently say that, that the Yode Hodes fan maxes out at 2000 RPMs, which is probably why it's so noisy. It's really not meant to run at 100% all the time. I know a lot of times when people are benchmarking coolers, they'll set the fans to 100. But what we're doing here isn't super scientific benchmarking. It's more like practical application benchmarking, like, hey, here's the situation and here's the scenario. And you can kind of compare. When kind of odd here that our CPU is only running at 3.7 megahertz. It's still 400 megahertz over the base clock. If you don't already know, the Ryzen 7 5700X is an eight core 16 thread CPU. Base clock is 3.4 gigahertz, boost clock is 4.6. But I have yet to see this CPU run 4.6 on all cores all at once. I'm not sure if that's a limitation of the motherboard. I picked this B450 motherboard because specifically I wanted to test the Athlon 3000G. 
Um, but if I had known that we were going to have to break the 5700X out, I probably would have gone, um, you know, with an X570 motherboard. I don't even know if the Athlon 3000G is compatible with any B550 boards, or even X570 for that matter. It's an it's an older CPU. All right, we're a little over six minutes in now. We're still topped out at 72 Celsius, which is kind of surprising, but our CPU uh, frequency won't go over like 3.8 gigahertz. I feel like we might be throttled somewhere else and I'm not sure where. This CPU cooler is really not ideal for the 5700X. Uh, it's sitting here just maxed out at 2000 RPM and just barely holding on. And that's at 3.7 gigahertz. If we were turboing up to 4.6, uh, I've got a pretty good feeling that uh, we'd be climbing up into the 80s and thermal throttling pretty quickly. So yeah, overall, I'd say this is a pretty good CPU cooler for the price. If you look at dollars versus performance, um, you know, especially down at the bottom at eight dollars, it's like, well, what, what can you really ask for? Would I recommend it for certain CPUs and certain applications? Yeah, absolutely. It's darn near a uh, small form factor cooler. Uh, the fan isn't the quietest, that's for sure. But if you're on a strict budget and you need a CPU cooler, I mean, a really strict budget, like you can't spend $20 on a nicer CPU cooler. Uh, <laughs> if you're on a strict budget and you need a CPU cooler, I'd say, yeah, the Yoda Hood will do just fine for you. I was really surprised by its performance. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. I've got the Game Max Infinity computer case. I'm gonna go ahead and build this PC in that case, and we're gonna do a quick case review, similar to what we did with the DIY PC Q3. In fact, the Game Max Infinity is an ATX friendly uh, version, if you will, of the DIY, DIY PC Q3. I think it's a great uh, perspective case for the price. So. We're gonna go ahead and do a build and a quick review of that, and you'll see that video about two days after you see this one. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.